So design for security using OCI. So how do we secure the infrastructure from what we have learned? So we are going to take the security part of everything what we've learned up till now and emphasize on how it helps with the security and the cloud infrastructure. First lesson we had learned is about regions and availability domains. So Oracle Cloud Infrastructure enables customers to select from the infrastructure with the different geographic areas. A region is the top level component of the infrastructure. Each region then separates out into multiple availability domains or the data centers as we used to say it. Each of these data centers are fault isolated locations so they are not connected to each other physically or they are not dependent to each other. So they each of them are self-sufficient and in infrastructure like building power generator cooling it, equipment and network connectivity. So as we said, each availability domain is built with fully independent infrastructure. So if you were to lose one of the data centers, uh, you could fall back to your other data center to keep your business going. So with physical separation comes protection. So against the natural and other disasters. So availability domains within the same region are connected by a secure high-speed, low-latency network, which allows customers to build and run highly reliable applications and workloads without minimum impact due to latency. There is very minimum latency and any performance issues. And all links between these two data centers are encrypted. So as a customer, you don't have to worry. It's all done in the background and Oracle infrastructure takes care of that. So what are the IAM service? How does that help with security? So the administrator of the tenancy can create users and groups and assign them the least privileged access to the resources there that can be partitioned into compartments. So a compartment, as we've discussed, is a group of resources that can be managed as a single logical unit of that business or of that project. So this helps in streamlining those or isolating those from all users. So for example, a customer can create a compartment, say HR compartment, to host specific set of cloud network, compute instances, and storage volumes. They could assign privileges to HR folks to access those, and they don't need to give access to the finance folks. Compartments are a fundamental component of Oracle Cloud infrastructure for organizing and isolating cloud resources. Customers use them to clearly separate resources for the purposes of isolation. Separating the resources for one project or business unit from another. A common approach is to create compartment for each major part of an organization. Unlike most Oracle Cloud infrastructure, services that are regionally scoped, identity is global. So the IAM is global. It can traverse through regions. So the tenancies could have multiple regions. So the same users could have access to multiple regions. Policy. As we've learned, a set of authorization rules that define access to resources within a tenancy. Users must be added to groups in order to access resources. So if we create a user, and we've seen that in an example, we created the user, and the user couldn't do much because he or she was not part of a group. So group administrators can grant access policies that authorize a group to consume or manage resources within a tenancy. And that's how you assign the policy to a group, and then that gives access to the user who's part of that. So we talked about IAM policies. So we're going to talk about authorization rules that define access. So what define access in, in this policy statements are the verbs. So we've looked at the verbs like inspect. Inspect provides the ability to list the resources. So it gives only the metadata of that resource. It doesn't give actually uh, what's in that resource, the data in that resource. So if you had the read verb, uh, and the policy, it gives the inspect plus the ability to get the user-specified metadata and the actual resource itself. Use includes read, everything with inspect read, plus the ability to work with the existing resource. Important, it has to be existing. And manage includes all the other privileges on that resource you could have. User credential to authenticate. That's what plays also a very important part in uh, securing your 
cloud infrastructure. Console pass password used to authentic authenticate the user to the Oracle cloud infrastructure console. API key, the user creates a public key pair and uploads the public key in the console and the endpoints from where the user is connecting as the private key. Swift password, uh, this is used by recovery manager, Armin, to access the object storage service for database backups, where the database backups are done. Again, this is generated by Oracle infrastructure, and it's a complex password. Customer secret key, it is used by Amazon S3 clients to access the object storage service, S3 compatibility, and API. So now we are going to look at resources, how resources help with the security. Bare metal. In bare metal instance, physical servers are dedicated to a single customer who has the complete control over the server. So there is no Oracle managed hypervisor that what you see in VM. So in, or any Oracle personnel have, pers personnel have no access to memory or local NVMe storage while the instance is running. So the all network virtualization is performed off box and only the Oracle integrated lights out, which is ILM. So it's a way of uh, getting in a back door to just start and stop that server. Uh, that's all ILM can do. So it does not have access to the data. Again, uh, what they do is once you terminate a bare metal, it has to go through a process of wiping out the data uh, from, from that server. Virtual machine. Now, virtual ma machine do help with the security part also, though they are a shared server that there could be multiple tenants on a bare metal instance where the hypervisor is running. So how does virtual machines help with uh, security? Because the infrastructure of the VM machines are managed by a security hardened hypervisor, which provide strong isolation between the tenants. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Instances use key-based SSH by default. So we have seen in the past, whenever we created a resource, uh, we provided the SSH public key, and we had the private key. That's how we could authenticate ourselves to that server when it was created. Oracle recommends using key-based SSH to access the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Password-based SSH could be susceptible to brute forcing attacks. This way, intruder needs to have the, the private key to act, but if they have your password, they can access from anywhere. So that's the difference. Oracle Linux images hardened with the latest security updates are available for customers to run on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So the images uh, run on the un unbreakable Enterprise Kernel, UAEK, and support advanced security features such as case splice to apply security patches without booting, which allows enterprise to live update their instances without any disruption. So now uh, we'll get into the network part, subnets. The primary subdivision of a VCN, as we learned, are subnets. Subnets are specifically to an availability domain or a data center and can be marked as private upon creation, which prevents instances launched in that sub subnets from having public IP address. So that's how they are isolated. Internet Gateway provides public internet connectivity from VCN. By default, a newly created VCN has no internet connectivity until a internet they are attached to an internet gateway. Dynamic Routing Gateway. A virtual router that provides a path for private traffic between a VCN and a data network. It is used with IPsec VPN or Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Fast Connect. This is what we learned was how you connect from your data center to the cloud infrastructure. Connection to establish private connectivity between a VCN and on-premises or other cloud networks. So if you could have uh, two cloud networks, you could use dynamic routing gateway for a private link to connect to both routing tables. The virtual, virtual routing tables that give the subnet access to the VCN gateways, internet gateway, and dynamic routing gateway. So routes can also use private IPs as a target to implement network functionality such as 
NAT, firewall, IDs, and so on. VNICs. So there are two types. Primary VNIC, subnet contains virtual network cards which attach to the instance. The VNIC determines how the instance connects with the endpoints inside and outside the VCN. Secondary VNICs, uh, they are again an optional, but so they can be used where a customer wants to bring their own hypervisor. They could use the secondary VNIC. So to allow the VCN networking for the VM, a secure VPN connection between a VCN and a data center. Security list, they are virtual firewall rules that allow ingress and egress to an instance at the packet level. Individual rules can be defined to be stateful or stateless. A virtual firewall rules are implemented by using VCN security list. Customers can specify a set of firewall rules and associate them with one or more subnets. So according to that rule, that subnet, the resources in, in that subnet can connect. So there are two types of firewall rules as we learned, ingress and egress. So in ingress rules, you have to specify the source IP cider and port range, destination port range, and the protocol to match, which protocol to is allowed, kind of. For egress rules, specify the destination IP cider and port range, source port range, and again, which protocol can be used. And again, they can be stateful and stateless. Now, how does OCI resources help with the security? So database systems are a major part of your infrastructure, actually, because that's where your, your data is, is stored. So DB systems are accessible only from customers' VCN. And customers can configure the VCN and security list to control network access to their database. The database service is integrated with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, IAM, for controlling which user can launch the database and manage. By default, the data is encrypted at rest using Oracle TDE, that is transparent data encryption, with master keys stored in an Oracle wallet. Armin backups, which are recovery manager, uh, backs up the database. Those are also encrypted and stored in customer-owned buckets and they also are password protected. So you need a Swift password to access those. Load balancing. So Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Load Balancing provides automated traffic distribution to compute instances in a customer's VCN. So load balancer can be created as private and public. So if they are public, they are accepting traffic from the internet and directing it to the private instances. Or if they are private, they are directing traffic between private instances. So the way the LB's load balancers can be configured for SSL termination using customer provided certificates, end-to-end -end SSL, whereby the LB terminates the SSL connection and creates a new SSL connection to the backend, or SSL tun tunneling in which the SSL connection is passed through to the backend. The Oracle Cloud Infrastructure DNS service provides dynamic static recursive DNS solution for the enterprise customers. The service connects visitors to customers' websites and applications with fast, secure services. The DNS also helps with DDoS. It protects against that, and it also is global. So, it, uh, so the DNS servers are replicated 18 point all over the globe. One of them in your region is down. DNS servers from another region can help you, so you've got constant availability. They also have an in-house security, which uh, looks through the data points if they see any fishy connections uh, coming through. So that's about how you can uh, cure your cloud infrastructure. This is everything we've learned. So it's just a high level, so you understand for the exam how is the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure secure? Everything we do in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is designed in such a manner that you are securing every at, at every level. So you're making it a very secured infrastructure.